Hey guys, thanks for watching. So today what I want to guys talk to you guys about is um, installing Tonito on an Ubuntu machine. So what that is is you're basically going to be running your own cloud service. So instead of running, you know, I mean using like a cloud service like Apple iCloud or Google Cloud or even Dropbox, you can basically set up your own cloud service on your own hardware and have it running the way you want it and, you know, have way more space and just do things that you would be able to do with it that you can't do with other cloud networks. So what we've got here is an Ubuntu machine. So our first step, what you're going to want to do is you're going to go sudo mkdir slash user slash local slash tomato. And what that's going to do is just basically make the directory for the, the tomato files. You can change this if you want, but just for you know, recreational purposes, we're going to just leave this as it is. And we're going to go like that. It's going to ask for your sudo password. There you go. Um, next, you're going to go cd user slash local slash tornado. And as you can see now, you're loaded into the directory. So now you're into the, that directory. So next, you're going to go sudo wget Okay, yeah, so that's pretty good. So, it's going to download the files. Just wait there for a bit. Do, do, do. Welcome to the internet. Okay, so now you got the files loaded. So here's the step that we actually have to change. So as you can see on the side here, I've crossed out the steps provided originally, and what you got to do now is go sudo, well, I can't type, sudo tar cxpf download okay so that's going to basically what this stands for is you're going to extract files and then verbose is just going to you know display what it's doing and that's just going to force write it i believe i can't remember all this all the time so yeah, you go. As you can see, it displayed everything with the verbose command. And now, what we can do to start our server is you go like this: tornado dot sh start. And as you can see, it's now starting our uh, the server. So we go to web browser now. Slow virtual box. Okay, so now you want to go local host, and that's the default port that Tonino is going to use. You go like that, and now you get to set up a name for the computer, basically an account for this computer. And the neat thing about this is, again, when you're using this service, is the passwords and the account info and everything is being stored on the server, like your computer here. It's not going to be ser uh, stored on their network. All that Tonita's network is going to do is act as a relay so that once you set up your account and you now go to a browser or anything else and you input that server's name, it's going to relay to your server, but it doesn't store any of that information. So again, it's really secure in that sense. So even if Tonita's networks get hacked, that doesn't mean immediately that they have access to all your files. It means quite the opposite. But, so here we're gonna go uh, further on. Here. So so once you're all set up and you got you got everything figured out and you know what you want to do and everything, it's obviously a test set up for me. Um, you just want to get you know obviously make sure you check see everything's available. You don't want to go create. It's gonna create the account. It's gonna log in. And again, this is the URL that gets provided for your server. This is part of the relay service. And you go next and uh, you know add an allow folder. So you can add whatever folders you want, or you can add access to all folders. I'd probably recommend to only add specific folders, and I've got it to my media folder right now. 
and then you're going to want to go obviously enable indexing it's going to be a little more taxing on your system but it helps just you know file navigation a bunch you go next then of course you have apps for mobile so again like you can see here it's got ios google play uh, windows blackberry and all that stuff but i will show you what the app can do on ios today you go close so now you have access to your server and this is the web client i'm access through it through localhost right now not actually through this gui but of course this is just for test purposes so from here on out um, if you really want to configure things, you can go to settings, you can go to account, you can change some stuff here. So you've got, you know, switch to a different account, language, uh, location, so you can change the location, stores user data. So again, if you want your user data not even stored on this, but stored on a USB drive, then that's even, you find even safer, you can do that. You can add additional security with remote logins. Uh, general this will just give you status of everything then your network so here's the relay if you turn off the relay then you don't get the URL .tonydoy.com anymore you can actually start using your own relay service right so obviously you could you're gonna have to have something set up like that so you're probably gonna have to have a business network or something or a DNS service providing you with a relay for that but otherwise you can just leave the relay on then if you go miscellaneous, this is where you can start changing folders, and you can change uh, indexed folders. You can set camera uploads. This is what I'll show you on the iOS app. It's very neat. So basically, you have automatic uploads of your iOS photos, or again, any camera upload. So if it's whether it's Android or Windows Phone, like we saw, and then here is an ignore list. So if I add an entire drive, you know, to the shared files folder. I can then start ignoring certain files or folders by just typing in their name and it'll be ignore match and it'll just be gone. Then you can do uh, iTunes playlist imports. Um, right now on Ubuntu, I'm not exactly sure if this works because of course Mac doesn't support Linux with uh, for iTunes. So we'll see about that. Then you can see jobs going on in the background and you can see a log. You know who's logged in. I'm the first person to log in about two minutes ago. Uh, troubleshooting log files and just about. And that's pretty much it for what I'm going to show you on this test server. Uh, what I will show you next will be on my actual running server. So stay tuned for that. Okay, so once you've got the iOS app installed on your phone, like as you can see right here for me, um, the first thing you're going to see is you obviously not going to see this server, but you're going to want to. You're just going to be at this screen. So the first thing you're going to want to do is you're going to hit this plus right here. You're going to enter your server credentials, right? And I've already got my entered, so that's good. Make sure everything's good. So again, that's there's this is an optional remote answer right here. So as well as a password in your server settings, you can set an optional remote answer to try and make it more secure if you want it like that. The next thing you want to do, and once you got your mobile uploads available on your server enabled on your phone. You're going to go to the right right here, and you're going to click the camera. And from there, what you're going to see is you're going to see some settings like camera upload. You're going to turn it on. Upload only on Wi-Fi. I do that, of course, because I don't want to rate my data. And then you're going to choose your server. So for me, I guess, right, it's there. It'll just see it. It'll just camera upload available servers. For me, I see it. There we go. Then it'll show you last upload, you know, the last upload count. And actually, look at that. For me, it's checking right now. That's perfect for the video. So you'll just see how it's doing a check right now, just to see if I haven't taken any more videos or pictures on my phone, and it's going to back them up on the server. And we'll go done for that. Next, what you can do for the server is you can actually just click on the server here. I'll connect, and it'll bring up, again, the menu that we kind of see here on the web, uh, web browser. So what we see here, if we go to Files, is we'll see my drives. Yeah, their name a little weird, but whatever. Um, so I'm gonna go to storage two, right? And then I can go download music. And I got all my music files here, and I can actually play them and stream them. Um, the reason why I'm not going to right now is because uh, the app I'm using to stream my phone to my computer, for some reason, just likes to also send the sound, and that's just not good right now for what I'm doing. So. But it works pretty good. I swear to God, it works really good. And then 
So from that, you've got access to all your files that you're setting available on the cloud network. And you've also got your player, recent, favorites. And you don't have access to the settings here, of course. So they're not going to make you be able to have admin controls from a phone. So for, uh, yeah, so that's pretty much it on the phone. I'm going to log out here. I'm just going to close this. Okay, so now on my web client server, again, what we have here is just the server like we saw before for settings, and this is for a bunch of people. If you have an issue and you're trying to find your drives on your account and you want to know how to get into them, you go add allow folder, go to the backslash here, and then you go to media, you'll find your user, and then you can find all your drives here. This is at least where my drives are, and then you can add them. And then from there, you can start adding ignore lists. Or, well, yeah, ignore lists for all sorts of folders. But that pretty much sums it up for today, guys. That gives you a running cloud network for your mobile devices and as well as all your, you know, your other networks. You, you don't always have to use the web client to access this. There are, of course, if you go here, you can install mobile apps. And as well, there are desktop apps for Windows and Mac where you can start mounting the shared drives as local drives and all sorts of things like that but you know at that point you know the world is yours because there's many other ways of accessing those drives at that point but the main issue or you know the main thing of this is just having a good secure cloud network for your phones or for any mobile devices one thing I do want to add is this of course being a cloud server is going to be dependent on your download and upload speed for download for you know, of course, for when you're downloading files, but upload is mainly going to be your issue here for when you want to retrieve files and sound send files to the server. So again, your upload is going to be dependent here on your location for when you're sending files to the server. And when the server is uploading files to you, it's dependent on its upload location where it's situated. So that's going to be predominantly your house network or if you have a fancy professional network set up for this, then super awesome. But a nice feature here is Tonito went pro for all users a while ago. So if you're on your web browser, like you can see here, you go down to sync files, you'll see you have a 200 gig max folder of sync files. And you don't have to upgrade right now, um, but you can change your sync folder location. And what that's going to do is that's basically a, a sync folder that should be independent of your server's upload capabilities. And this will be data, I believe, that will be sitting on Tonita servers. So I'm not exactly sure about that. I'll have to, you know, try and get them on forum posts to answer some of me sometimes. But we'll see if they answer. And we'll see what exactly what that entitles. But yeah, just keep in mind that this is highly dependent on your upload speed for just getting good performance out of your cloud network. Thanks.